Hello and welcome to episode six in our third season of Rock to the Cloud. As ever, may I offer a massive thank you for staying with us on this series, which I hope you're finding as insightful as I am. As we say every week, we really do love spending this time with you to discuss all topics around Windows Server 2022 and Microsoft Hybrid Cloud Solutions. In each episode of From Rock to the Cloud, we bring in some of the world's most foremost figures in Windows Server and Hybrid to help you get whatever you need or that just what you want to know about it. Per the usual, if you have any questions about the episode, make sure you pop them into the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. So today's episode is all is uh, about our recently announced single node HCI solution. And for the next 30 minutes or so, I'll be catching up with Ellen Kirby and Samantha Doherty, whom I'll introduce in a moment. We also have some elements later that you guys can get involved with, so please do stick around. So if you've been following the series, you will know by now that we'd like to bring you the world's leading voices in Windows Server and Hybrid. And today is no exception. In fact, on today's episode, we're joined not by just one person, but two very special guests from Microsoft. And with that, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to Ellen Kirby and Samantha Doherty. Uh, and those, of course, who watched the last episode will remember Ellen, of course. So welcome. How are you both? Oh, we're Great, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. That's good to hear. So let's start with Ellen, given it's a repeat performance. Thank you again for joining us, Ellen. Um, can you just introduce yourself for the audience watching, just in case people didn't see the last episode? Oh, I hope they go back and watch that because we had a great discussion on Azure Virtual Desktop. But I am part right. of the Azure Customer and Partner Engineering team, and we focus a lot on our customer engagements so that we can understand what we need to be doing to continue to improve and add value to the Azure hybrid tools. So I'm very excited to talk to you guys today about some of the things that have been as a direct result of these customer engagements and understanding our signal so that we're directing our product teams toward making informed decisions on how we continue to evolve and build the products. Thank you, Ellen. Samantha, welcome. Uh, thank you very what much for having me on. <laughs> I no, am no, Samantha no. Doherty. That's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say welcome. What can you tell us about your role at Microsoft? <laughs> and you were actually going to tell us already, again. so you preempted my question. <laughs> Uh, for sure. Hi, everyone. I am Samantha Doty. I am responsible for the um, apps and infra product portfolio within the device partner sales organization here at Microsoft. Um, so anything related to devices um, at the edge, uh, that's currently my role. And I'm looking forward to this great discussion on single node um, and all the greatness that we have to share with you today. Super. Thank you, Sam. So again, let's go back to Ellen. Uh, given she was the first person to join us or to be introduced. So, Ellen, can you tell us a bit about why Microsoft has extended the Azure Stack HCI to a single node offering? Absolutely. So I've had a very fortunate position in being able to be engaged on multiple customer opportunities and engagements as folks try to adopt and modernize with their Azure hybrid posture. And one of the things that we noticed was there was struggle, especially in those remote branch office scenarios where the adoption was slower than we had hoped it would be. And part of the feedback we were getting is that cost associated with starting at a two node offering and making those hardware investments and folks not really feeling like that was an easy thing to justify to their management. So what we did is we thought back as to what are the benefits we're bringing to Azure Stack HCI as a solution and how could we come up with a better introductory offering for these types of customer needs, where we can focus in on providing the value of Azure Stack HCI, but maybe give them an opportunity to leverage some of the hardware in the catalog to uh, be able to be a little bit more prescriptive in starting small and then ultimately scaling. Got it. So Samantha, uh, Ellen mentioned the hardware catalog um, and mm -hmm. having single node offerings. Are there any partners working to expand that hardware offering at the moment? Oh, absolutely, Jason. We have a number of partners. I mean, we're working with over 30 OEM partners today that has contributed to our catalog. And um, we are currently in the process of continuously updating that catalog. So it will be an evolving process. 
And in the catalog, you will see that in the solutions that we have, we will identify where single node is actually uh, used for or capable uh, with whichever partner that is associated. Um, so the catalog is updated. It will be continuously be updated. Um, and it, just, you know, one important point I want to raise on single node. Single node deployments are ideal for environments with no data center infrastructure. So make sure you visit our catalog at um, Azure Stack HCI catalog and look at our latest offerings in there. Great. Um, I think moving back to Ellen, um, what do you, well, in fact, both of you actually, let's, let's, let's ask you both. That would be good. What do you see as the best benefit for a customer choosing a single node deployment of Azure Stack HCI? Let's start with yeah. Ellen, shall we? Absolutely. So uh, I think it's interesting. Um, there's this concept of bringing a control plane forward where customers are going to be able to util utilize unified management tools up in Azure through Arc. And they want to start taking advantage of multi-cluster management and utilizing some of these rich Arc features for servicing. But the, the challenge always is scale and how do they continue to grow with that? And one of the things I think is the best thing about deploying a single node solution to Azure Stack HCI is that a customer gets an opportunity to utilize all these great investment Microsoft has made in Azure Arc and management tooling, but they're doing it in a way where they can really get off the ground. And ultimately, because of the way we've designed Azure Stack HCI, and the single node entry level, you can scale. So you can add more nodes to the cluster as you grow and then start to take full advantage of the additional functionality that comes with two nodes and beyond of an Azure Stack HCI solution. Got it. Samantha, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think one of the biggest advantages of single node is addressing that cost sensitive deployments. You know, a lot of the organizations that we're seeing specifically in retail um, is looking for a cost sensitive deployment scenario where they can really reduce the number of hardware that they have in a location and address some of the support capabilities that they need at specific locations or multiple locations for that matter. We also see that um, there's a lot of requests on environmentally challenging uh, environments such as high dust and humidity. Those things can be addressed by single node. And then, of course, that there's also a VM <clears throat> per location. Therefore, the need, the number of cores are reduced. So it's significantly cost saving um, for customers uh, looking at a single node deployment, but with the horizon in mind that they could potentially extend that at a later stage. So you just mentioned retail there, Sam. Um, which other sort of key industries would you think this really fits or is it ubiquitous across everywhere, do you think? I think it can be applied to any industry. Um, it's not unique to a specific scenario or a specific use case. It's ultimately about the problem that the customer is trying to solve for, um, and it can be easily adapted. Got it. But I do know that Ellen does have a couple of scenarios that she could potentially share with you on customers that we've done deployments on. Please share, Ellen, if you can. Without uh, yeah, so I can talk a little bit about where we saw the signal and really escalated to our engineering teams to make the determination that single node needed to happen. A lot of them have been in the retail and restaurant chains because there's really this idea of being able to deploy something very cost effective across hundreds and thousands of locations, it became very cost prohibitive for those customers to take full advantage of the Azure Stack HCI solutions with a two node entry point. Mm -hmm. So we definitely found, and I, and I saw it over and over again and have had several customer examples, especially in retail, where they want to start taking advantage of those concepts of store of the future and where are we actually going with these technologies as they're adapting and adopting um, a containerization approach. And this gives them a good, stable, reliable platform Absolutely. to start building and growing with the products. Got it. So when do you think I should use a single node solution rather than Windows Server? Great question. Um, and I'm, you know, <laughs> I don't think it is rather than Windows Server. I think it is with Windows Server. Um, I think there is scenarios where Windows Server plus Azure Stack HCI single node actually is, um, you know, coexists. And when we look at the scenarios in Azure Stack HCI single node versus uh, Windows Server, they both address two different key needs. You know, as an example, for HCI, it's the best virtualization host 
um, to modernize your infrastructure, either for existing workloads in the core data center or emerging requirements for branch and office and edge locations. Where if you look at Windows Server as a guest operating system inside the virtual machines or containers, and you can run a server for a Windows application. So it just depends on the use case and it depends <clears> on the scenario that the customer is looking to support. I feel that it is a and and not a versus. Great answer. Thank you, Sam. So I suppose this is kind of a rhetorical question, really. I think I kind of know the answer myself, but you know, is this single node solution managed in the same way as all our other Azure Stack HCI solutions? Yeah, and that's, I think, the differentiator between utilizing another um, platform versus a single node HCI is that you are getting that benefit of the ARC tooling and the management of scale. And you're doing that at an entry point that is, again, cost effective and is something that customers can really get their feet wet with starting to embrace these hybrid technologies, especially in these remote branch office solutions where they're looking to try to drive the edge. Super. So just before we close out, anything else you may want to add? Because we're going to move on to the next part of our show. Otherwise, thank you so much for the content so far. Uh, very insightful, as always. Um, but anything else you may want to add? Or, or do you think we've kind of covered the, the key points around our single node solution? In fact, actually, one one key point. When when is this available? Are we Are we available now? Or is this something that's pending release? We actually made the announcement for it at Build a few weeks back. So um, this is a um, an availability today, but it is also hinged on the availability and the validation in the catalog. So like Sam was talking a little bit about the different um, OEM partners that we have, they're adding single node offerings into the catalog. As we grow that, as was stated earlier in the conversation, that's going to be that's going to make it even more um, even more effective for customers to be able to choose the right solution for them and get this out the door and deployed. Mm -hmm. Super. And also, um, you know, Jason, mm. one important point to highlight, as um, Ellen just said. You know, from a local perspective, what we see in the catalog may not necessarily be the reality at country level or in, in, in local level. So make sure that you align with your OEM and understand what their portfolio of products is that is available. And if you have any questions related um, support, just reach out to the team and we'll happily answer that. Super. Uh, thank you both. Thank you very much indeed. So look, we're going to move on to the next part of the show, which is, uh, let's call it the fun part of the show, which is called the server acronym review. Uh, and now, you know, like everyone involved in the tech world, I just love a long, confusing acronym that doesn't make any sense. But luckily for us, as every week, the producers have found a few server acronyms to show us. We're going to put ourselves on the spot. In fact, I'm going to put you two on the spot this week. I'm going to keep out of this one because <laughs> uh, I don't seem to get them right anyway. So at least I don't have to embarrass myself. Um, and let's see what we can guess what they are. So, producers, would you um, like to put something down there? And look, by the way, if you've got any thoughts, please put them in the comment section below. Tell us what you think about these acronyms, if they're nonsense, if they make any sense, if it's something you're learning, please put the comments in there. We'd love to hear from you. So let's start with the first one, shall we? Who wants to take this one? Ellen, it's competition time, shall we say? Come on, 10 points for the first answer. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, so I always think of an MCT as a Microsoft certified trainer, but I'm probably way off. <laughs> and I was swapping it around thinking MTC, maybe Microsoft Technology Center, but it's not that. So I actually don't know. Here we go. Oh, oh my God. We we like 10, 10 points to Ellen. <laughs> I, think, I think we only have two or three. So let's see how many we can get the point. See if you can even it up. SPLA. I think oh, I know this one. Yeah, well, you have that one, Samantha, because we talk about squaws a lot. Do you know what? I don't. Uh, but Jason, you know the answer, right? I think I do. Service do provider you? license agreement. Yeah, yes, because it's correct. actually something. This is actually Absolutely. something we're we we have challenges with when it comes to supporting it on um, Azure Stack HCI because of the the way we license the model. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Do we have any more, Mr. Producer? or Are we done? Have we got another one? Oh, I can. Oh, we do. Ooh. I can. Well, I can't because I have no idea. <laughs> I can't either. I've got no idea. 10 points. Oh. Me and Ellen, is she going to take the lead here? Clearly, Sam, mm. you can't, can't pull the one back yeah. here. No idea. Um, the only thing I can remember with that is that I think it has to do with um, how you do the domain name registration. 
I can't remember what the different acronyms are for. Internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she says confidently. Yeah, I, I, I knew all of that, she says. Thank you. Well done. No, I didn't know the name, but I know when people talk about ICANN, they're talking about that specific registration process for registering their domain names. <laughs> but I couldn't have told you all the letters. <laughs> <laughs> so look if you uh, have any comments of course don't forget to put them in the window below but look before we wrap up again thank you for the time today but let's just recap on what we've covered with both ellen and sam so i think i've been making some notes while you were speaking by the way as i always do every week um i think cost being prohibitive uh was one of the reasons why we we came up with this solution to make it simpler more cost effective you know for those small edge type solutions um and i think one of the key benefits as well would be the you know the fact we've got the single control plane that's managing those edge solutions across uh you know a unified infrastructure um obviously utilizing the azure arc um and environmentally um you know if there is certain issues in terms of edge locations where having a you know full-blown infrastructure will be uh, prohibitive of course this makes it really cost effective for a customer to do that would that be a fair statement yeah, I think great. so. Perfect. My recapping is still capping. So look, again, thanks again to both of you. Um, it's been absolutely super, super insightful as always. Thanks everybody for tuning into this episode of From Rock to the Cloud. Keep an eye out right here on docs.microsoft.com, LinkedIn, Microsoft Server Partner Club, and the IT Ops Talk channel on YouTube for the next episode. Remember, as I keep saying, drop your thoughts in the comments below. It's been an absolute pleasure having everybody today and uh, like always ellen you remember this from last week if we can have our little thumbs up or silly face or whatever it means to be to get a thumbnail for the episode that would be very welcome there we go thanks oh, everyone thanks Thank again you. cheers <laughs>